Hello, this is another video about the bullet roaster and maintenance on the bullet roaster. Uh, I'm Thompson and these are a couple of bullets that we're going to look at. And what I'm going to do here is open up the back of the bullet and um, take a look and compare the way that the motor and belt are mounted in um, the most recent delivery we, delivery we had versus the previous first generation here. So first thing to do is pull the chaff collector out. As you can see, this bullet has been used a lot. We've done about 80 roasts on it and done basically little maintenance. Uh, the only issue I've had with this bullet was one time I, I struggle sometimes with the um, rubber gasket on the chaff collector. In fact it's sort of out of place right now. And uh, the chaff basket, pulling the chaff basket I take the whole thing out. One time when I put it back in <clears throat> this wasn't flush in and it was contacting the fan. Um, made a loud sound, I turned it off and knew right away what I'd done. So, so this fan runs quietly. Um, on a brand new roaster, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna reach in the front and you wanna move this drum around and see that it moves smoothly. And it's, it's a little difficult to move it from the back. So there we go. If we move it kind of too fast, the drum should slip. Sounds like that. If your drum is slipping when you uh, turn it on and the drum, uh, the, belt, the belt is slipping, you will definitely want to check that your drum's in correct position and your belt hasn't come totally loose. Um, the second option there, a belt to being totally loose, is, is kind of a slim chance on a new roaster. I'll show you why <clears throat> in a minute. So. I wanted to mention too that um, a lot of comments, we have people with very different degrees of tech savviness and mechanical ability that want to roast coffee and the bullet is for everyone except you are going to need to work on your coffee roaster. You're going to need to open it up. Um, the nature of coffee roasting as well as the mechanical nature of roasters being a high heat operation. It's not a blender, it's not a bread machine. You will hopefully not have to be doing this all the time, but you um, need to get comfortable with it. Um, the first thing is to get some nice um, tools. So as far as you need a set of metric Allen wrenches, you can, if you've got a bullet on order, you should just get your metric Allen wrenches right away. Um, I like to use little nut driver ones like this. You can get sets with many, many options. Um, however, for a lot of operations, you what you need is a long handle metric, um, not like a stubby little Allen wrench or hex key wrench as they're called, um, but you need something with a long handle. The really nice ones actually are super long and have a T connection here, and you can turn them really easily. I do not have a set of those, but I have a set coming right now. So there's gonna be four screws that we're gonna remove with the three millimeter uh, wrench. And you'll see some other options here, things to take off. Those are not the right ones. If you happen to drop these screws down, I'll try to pull it out. It's kind of like uh, that game operation. Taking out the spleen, whoopsie. Had it coming and I dropped it, it's no problem. You can simply retrieve it from the bottom there after. Another thing that I noticed on some brand new bullets I worked on was that 
I felt like things were a little bit under tightened. Now, over tightening generally with mechanical things such as this is really not, is, is kind of worse than anything. But obviously as the roaster moves and vibrates, things are gonna, excuse me, I'm having trouble lining this up. Things are gonna come a little loose. While over tightening is not the answer, checking your, um, your various screws and bolts, etc., is a great idea uh, from time to time. And even on a brand new roaster, just snugging things up a little. Um, what we found out is that while the pallets that we get uh, come and the boxes are all real crisp, and um, I think that the packaging of the roaster itself is excellent. We think that UPS has been pretty brutal in delivery. Um, that's okay, these boxes can take it the way, they, the way they're designed. However, um, it can mean that things can come loose. Okay, I have forgotten something here. Okay, there we go. So, you can see your four, your four points there that you're screwing in. It's just the plastic cover that comes off. And we see our fan, our belt, our uh, motor drive. You see the fan down there, which is connected to the CB. Let's come around this way for a proper view. Okay. So, um, what you see here is this is the mount for the motor. And you'll see that this is mounted with two, two screws. I think these are four millimeters, sorry, and rubber on either side. They kind of, the rubber kind of nests in there. You see your rear PCB here. Your control, your control board with a fuse. So if you ever have an issue and your roaster just kind of dies or you want to check this fuse. So you're going to need to access the same compartment. There's lots of things that can happen back here. We've had a couple issues with rear PCBs on the latest shipment that results in error messages uh, to the front uh, control, the front panel up there. So, uh, so this is something that we will replace. Um, we're getting some extra scent right now. And um, so you get your fuse. You'll notice that this is not connected. That's not a problem. It's not supposed to be. And let's check because what we're gonna do is your belt here, the tension is gonna be set by shifting the motor and you'll the lower uh, mount here is just a simple hole through that's secure and the top is a slot as you can kind of see and it pivots this can move back and forth in this gosh I'm sorry about it. it can move back and forth so the whole this carriage will slide out to tension the belt more I want to show you something that's different here on the brand new shipment. Okay, there we go. Same, lower bolt is a simple pivot point and the upper there has the slot. It would, to adjust, you would tension out, except they've installed a spring here. This is a spring that's pushing against the carriage here that the motors motor mount carriage oh there you can see it and i'm just working my screwdriver in there to kind of show it moving slightly so basically it's auto tensioning it's keeping a consistent tension on that belt i'm going to because the motor over here runs smoother and quieter 
granted that this has been broken in. I'd say 80 rows is, is quite well broken in. I'm gonna actually do a little experiment later today and I'm gonna take off that spring and just sort of manually, as with this first generation roaster, um, uh, gosh, sorry. Oh, you know, a little Oakland emergency services going by. I'm gonna try removing the spring and running without it. So I'm gonna just loosen up my lower. And the cool thing here is unless you need to replace your belt, you don't have to take this off. There's quite a lot of things here you don't have to take apart. By the way, this roaster is unplugged. <laughs> so that is uh, as loose as can be. Let's see if I go around the front and move it. Now we're just slipping all over. And that sound is specifically because there's kind of teeth on the belt, so it makes a kind of sound. Okay, and I'll just tension that up, pushing outward this way. I'll set that. I loosen this just slightly. Now what's interesting on the new machine with the spring is that when I try to do this and have tried to actually set the tension lighter to see if I can affect that sort of noise when it's running, this spring is so strong, it just pushes it back out. That's because of these rubber mounts that are, you know, isolating the vibration. So they both have the same rubber mounts to isolate vibration. It's just that spring is the difference. And I want to see if I can get it to run a little bit quieter without it. That said, it will quiet down as the belt, you know, sort of wears in and, and uh, um, etc. I also noticed that between the two, Let's try to get this. Okay, check out the pulley. You see the teeth, you see the belt, the width of the belt. And in fact, from my view here, I would say the thickness of the belt. It's quite a lighter duty belt and narrower. Now look here, the new machine. I believe that belt is wider and thicker so we may just be um that's good they made it stronger <laughs> but we may be seeing um some of the noise from the extra tension put against the motor etc and um, this machine over here i've both of them i've unhooked the belt spun the spun the drum drum spins quietly freely perfectly so okay uh so there was no real <laughs> point or repair that I'm doing here. I just want to show you how you access this, talk a bit about the fact that you need to learn to <laughs> work on your roaster. And as I said, hopefully not every day, not all the time, but um, coffee roasting is, is that's what it is. Um, uh, it, this is not, you know, a uh, machine that you just set it, forget it. And, you know, I'm a little worried because the bullet looks like a fairly slick appliance um, that some people might have been attracted to it thinking that it was something like a bread machine or whatever. And I don't think you'll be opening up the back all the time um, or opening up the front, but it's good to know how and get yourself some really good metric hex wrenches, Allen wrenches. Uh, and you know, really, if you get a brand new roaster, I would, I would go ahead and open up these things. I would um, take off the faceplate. You really have to check the bearing um, here, that it's, it's, it's correctly mounted. We have information and videos on the site and photos. And we sent photos, to, uh, uh, email to everybody today to let them know how to inspect this, shim it if necessary, and make sure that your drum 
did not shift in shipping. Um, and like we said, we think this is happening in the final phase where UPS handles it. Um, you take off the plate in the front, you can look around. You can take off the, with the two millimeter, I think that's two, that's three millimeter hex wrench. And, um, you know, get familiar with your coffee roaster. You're not gonna kill anything or break it. And <laughs> if you do, um, and if something's wrong, we'll send you what you need and uh, us and bullet. So, all right. Bullet. <laughs>